Apologies if you can hear a fan in the background. Unfortunately, it's about 332 degrees Celsius in my room currently, and I'm currently actually cooking sausages on my foot, so bear with me if you hear some sizzling as well. But I've made a lot of videos about Mod Howl, and it's not a surprise to me or to any of you guys that I bloody love this game. And actually, last video I made a thing on a video on some of the negatives, some of the stuff I didn't like. So I thought, let's flip that on its head and change that around a little bit. And, and Mod Howl came out and somehow has become one of the biggest games on Steam within two weeks. A small indie company managed to create something that has captivated tens of thousands of people. And this is why I think Mordhau did something incredible. First off, Mordhau, what is it? Well, if you haven't played it at all, what are you doing? It's a game on Steam that came out on something of the something of the something. And it's a first person medieval slice them up, absolutely destroy everybody. There's gore in it, there's decapitation, there's amputation, there's siege weaponry, there's massive 32 versus 32 battles, or you can go into duels. There's also a horde mode where you fight against AI and there's hordes that come up and eventually you get harder and harder AI and enemies that come towards you, they get faster and faster and stronger with more arm and better weapons and eventually you start fighting against goddamn giants. It's incredible. We actually did a clan horde mode back and we got 64 players on the horde server. A little bit cheating, but we managed to complete the whole of the horde and it's a lot of fun. In it though, there's also the battle royale mode and everyone knows battle royale is, is the bane of any true true gaming gaming fanatic gay gamer yep g g fuel but the battle royale mode isn't actually that played in mod how it's sort of been pushed to the side a little bit by the player base but front lines is where it's at a 32 versus 32 massive scale battle with capturing points very similar to a more battlefield type conquest map game mode but of course set medieval somewhere times i mean you can have big long swords you can have mauls you can have maces you can do the sword and shield route if you don't know how to block you can <laughs> You can use a bow and arrow if you want to get those pinion headshots, crossbows, you can even go engineers putting down spikes and barricades and even ballistas if you get enough engineer points. And of course there's the cool things like bards which, my god, the bards boards in with the loot and I don't know if you guys know this but you can actually put in your own midi files to the bards loot playing so you can play basically any song that you've got a midi file for. So there's a guy playing Pirates of the Caribbean as you'll see here. <laughs> This is the worst Pirates of the Caribbean that I've ever heard. And basically everything else under the sun. God, I hope I don't get copyrighted for that. But why is this game so popular? Why have so many people started playing it? Within the first week or two, it had 500,000 copies sold. Which you might think, for a AAA game, that's nothing. This is not a AAA game. This was made by a really small gaming studio that came from being veterans of chivalry, as you'll see has some similarities to Maud Howe. They came from it and they decided they want to improve it. A game that was so old, but it still had a hardcore fan base. People loved that game, especially when it came out, it was all over YouTube and everywhere. But what if they did an improved and updated version? And that's how Maud Howe spawned. First off, it's a great price. I mean, it was about £20, which is about $23, $24 when it first came out of the opening weekend, which for a game these days is incredible. That's more than half than most games. I feel like everyone's raving about when Battlelord comes out, but they'll be shocked because Mountain Blade was 15 quid on Steam. Battlelord's probably going to be around the 30 to 40 mark. I mean, it's such a bigger game than Warband was and more popular. But Mortow in 2019 came out at £20. With the amount of content that it packs in, it's incredible. And no, it doesn't have a vast single player, rich storytelling, but what it does have is a really concise and enjoyable multiplayer experience that they've chiseled down to the best way it can be played. Now, of course, upon release, there were server issues, but these were mostly patched and fixed in, and it meant that the vast amount of servers meant so many people could play it. If you just take all the filters off, the amount of official server support that these guys have put on is insane. There's hundreds of them. And if you check in the evenings, most of the time you'll have like 50, 60 servers full to the brim with 64 out of 64 players. It's insane. Getting a match can sometimes be pretty tricky if you're trying to go into the official ones. There's so many people playing this game at the moment. 
and just to see a tiny development team do this is just incredible and I'm assuming gives a lot of hope to some small indie companies. I mean, it's not all about money, but the money that they have made, the vast amount of money for their team, will be able to improve this game to no end. But it's only multiplayer, so how does it keep its player base? Well, let's talk a little bit about the combat mechanics, because this is the main focus. It is all centered around this medieval combat. When you're in first person, yeah, there is third person, but I wouldn't recommend using it. The weapons are so weighted, they're heavy, you feel like you're swinging an axe, you feel like you're swinging a mace. I mean, if you hit someone in the head with a maul, you will be popping their skull like a melon, and it feels extremely satisfying. Blocking arrows in midair is so awesome, there's so many cool different mechanics and things like that. It has a combat system that, yeah, is pretty easy to learn to start with. Normal blocking and swinging, pretty easy. It's all about timing, though. Mountain Blade has a very directional combat system where you can hold any block in pretty much any direction, but this is very different. It doesn't matter what direction you're blocking in as long as you're facing the enemy, you will block them as long as you do it at the right time. But this is where the difficulty comes in. Getting it at that exact time, you block for less than a second. So having to put that right mouse button down at the exact moment to block an enemy's attack is crucial and it has more advanced techniques once you've learned that sort of thing like chambering which takes up more stamina but it means you're able to do the same attack as the enemy and you'll clash in midair and you'll be able to follow through with your attack often catching the enemies off guard using things like spears are really effective when you're in large groups of people because you have that extra rage you're able to stab through groups and get those cheeky spear kills and i'm talking about cheeky kills for a reason this is not a 1v1 game i mean yes you can have jaws and you can have a lot of skilled games but when you're playing in teams never go for the hard kill if you see someone in front of you you would never run at them and this is what makes this game special I mean, in a lot of other games, you see someone, you shoot at them, and that's fine. If you see someone and start running away, you chase them. This game is not the best idea to do that, because often you'll get killed because there's some incredible players in this. But the best way to play Mordhau is to get the scummy kills. And I know that sounds, oh, that's not honorable. Mordhau is not an honorable game. You go for the brutal, most effective, most efficient kills possible. You want to take down your enemy in the shortest time possible in order to move on to the next. If your teammate is in a battle fighting someone else, you go up behind that enemy and you slice them in the back of the head. You don't go and do a 1v1 off with someone else at the other side of the map. If you see someone that isn't facing you or already engaged with a friendly, you take that kill. That is how you can push forward as a team and it really accentuates team play over a one person's actions. And this takes it on to a really unknown mechanic that I think is why this game is so addictive. And that's how fast paced it is. Charging into battle, getting in there, you'll take down a few enemies, but inevitably you will be killed. And you respawn and you have to keep pushing and pushing. And the reason this game is so fast paced is because it offers so much more advantages to an attacking force. Yes, a lot of games you can defend, hold points. This is not a game that helps you with that. Yes, of course, sometimes you're going to have to hold a point, but the time you're going to do the best is when you're attacking. Because this game accentuates the attacker, it accentuates chambering over blocking, it accentuates flanking over 1v1s, and this is why the game is so fast paced, it's always pushing you forward, giving an advantage to the attacker. If you're holding a shield up, the person battering your shield will eventually wear down your stamina and that shield will go flying and they can get the kill. If you stay on the defensive all the time, you will be demolished. And that that's what the stamina mechanic does, keeping the players always attacking rather than having to stay defensive for long periods of time because we all know someone that goes into a battle and tries to turtle it. This game, if you try that, you will get destroyed. And the fast paced nature of it is what keeps people coming back and arguably what makes people extremely angry. And I know first bat and saying a game makes you angry surely means that's not a very good game. Well, I would argue with that. People get so angry in this game, and I do, running into battle and instantly getting headshot, instantly getting killed, but that just makes you want to hit that respawn button and get into the battle faster. It keeps wanting to make you come back and back and again, trying again and again and again, until it's so rewarding when you finally get that kill, when you finally take down that enemy that keeps taking you out, or when you finally capture that point with a big rush from your teammates. That's what makes this game so addictive and so replayable for a multiplayer only game. Let's talk a little bit more about the mechanics though. In this game, they have real-time collision, which isn't new, but being done well is something that we 
really haven't seen too many games. I mean, think back to a VR game. Yes, I'm talking about a VR game. Blade and Sorcery, perhaps one of the most popular VR games at the moment, or especially when it came out. A medieval fighting dueling game with collision detection. And this is what made the game so different, clashing swords in midair, being able to block arrows, being able to go up to one of the enemies, pick them up and smash them into a barricade or a wall or kick them onto spikes. Real-time collision detection makes a game so satisfying, especially when it comes to medieval games. And this game has it to no end. And it's not just fighting blocking. I mean, any game can do blocking, but can any game do chambering? Can it do clashes in midair? Can it do shooting and blocking arrows with your swords? I mean, even if you swing your sword at the correct time and an arrow is coming through midair, you will whack that arrow to the side. If another arrow is coming through midair and you shoot at it with your bow, you will knock that arrow out of its course, out of the sky with your arrow. Everything has its own hitbox and hit detection. Even catapults, I know this sounds weird, can actually be shot out of midair with ballistic or crossbows, the catapult bolts. It's so satisfying and it's so cool. If you have a throwing knife and you throw it at someone, they can whack it out at midair or it will stick in their head. And yes, if it doesn't kill them straight away, which often it can do, they'll be running around with a knife in their head and they can rip it out their head and throw it at you. Or you can go over to them and rip it back out their head and throw it at them again. Or often what I like to do is make my teammates go in front of me as a meat shield. And when they get hit by throwing weapons, just rip it out of their thigh and just, oh, I'll have that. And then throw it back at the enemy. Me. All these small things make this game different to any other game. There's so many games that try this, but it's never really applied itself and been so successful than Maud Howe does. I mean, one of the most satisfying things are the spikes in this game. Putting them down as engineers and having people running into them and just their body flop over them and the spikes just going through and impaling them or charging at one with a horse and absolutely getting demolished and the horse just being flown off into the distance or putting bear traps around behind people and when they step into it, their legs just crumple beneath them and they fall to the floor dead and bloody. It is so satisfying, everything that you do in this game. Upon this, there's some smaller things as well, like interactions with the map. There's weapons hidden around the map, and you might think, that seems a bit weird. They're not really supposed to be weapons. They're sort of like environmental things, which help a little bit with world building. Blacksmith's hammers, mallets around. You can find a rake or you can find like a hoe. And no, I don't mean your mother. Oh. Oh, I'm so fucking original. But you can just find these things lying around and you can use them as weapons. I mean, you can get on a horse and you just find a lance lying around and you're going and just get so many kills. Horses are goddamn annoying, but you can get so many kills with them. Putting down your lance and killing three people, impaling them like a cocktail stick on your lance. Other interactions with the map, such as opening and closing gates, lifts that you can step on and send them off into the distance. My god, this game is packed to the brim. But let's talk a little bit about customization. Yes, there's such a broad customization in this which makes the progression so much fun, giving you a reason to come back earning money and XP. Whilst there are a few tweaks that could be done in it, I think it's pretty successfully done on the whole. And wait for this, you earn money in the game and you buy weapon skins and things like that, but there's no microtransactions. Which is incredible for a game that has a customization and progression system with money in 2019. You cannot use real money, you have to play and use the stuff that you get from in-game from doing well to actually get better armor and skins. Now, I say better armor, but this is just different types of better armor, more customizable armor. Maybe you want light pants and a heavy chest plate. Maybe you want a heavy hat and basically naked on everything else. But this doesn't mean if you've played more, you're going to be more OP than other people other than your own skill. Because anyone that spawns in can choose one of the set classes, which has anything from light to heavy to archer to bear trap man to loot player. So there isn't really problems with balance when it comes to actually leveling up and customization. If you've played for 100 hours, you're going to have exactly the same possibilities and equipment than someone that's played for 20 minutes. And that's what makes this game so accessible. It's created a massive community that's grown so fast. It's, I think it got to like the 11th most played game on Steam with like 60,000 people playing at once, which is insane for a small indie game. As a game that started as a Kickstarter, yes, a Kickstarter, raised like $298,000. They've really been able to deliver what they promised from the beginning. I don't make these videos often. Only games that really mean something. And they've always been games that have been out for years that I've loved for years. But this one's been out for two weeks, and I really do think it's because it did something special. To see a developer deliver what they promise, 
to not over promise and under deliver but be bang on yes there were server issues yes there were bugs they fixed them and the only reason there were server issues because they didn't have the faith in their game that everyone else did <laughs> which obviously they should have because they didn't think so many people would play this game i think they probably should have had a little bit more faith about the amount of people because the servers were just hell on the first day but it was fixed and the developers i assume they're growing as a team now and they're producing more content new maps modding tools are coming out soon and i i really can't wait new game modes bigger servers which is something that i really am looking forward to mod how has been very rare having a gaming company that has kept true to itself and it delivered something that it seems like is widely enjoyed by so many people and i think that deserves to be praised more than anything which is my main reason for making this video anyone from the mod how development team Thank you so much for what you have created and I can't wait to see what you bring out soon. But thank you so much for watching. I know it's been a long video, but I just like gushing in these videos and it's it's just something fun to do. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more Mod How content. But until then, I will see you in the next one. <laughs>